Hi everybody, welcome to this video entitled Avoiding Pitfalls in MOSFET Switching Loss Calculation. This is the second part of this video. In previous video, Power Electronics number 88, we saw the motivation, we review the MOSFET turn on and turn off processes, and we presented the different switching loss calculation equations. Today we are going to focus on the calculation of the losses using only data sheet information and as usual everything is going to be illustrated with QSPICE simulations. Here you have some relevant videos related to this topic so if you want to get more information about it then please take a look at these videos and of course it's very advisable for you before continuing with this presentation to watch this previous video, Power Electronics number 88. Before continuing today, we are going to see very quickly how to obtain the difference in time of two points that are over an exponential evolution, as shown here. So we have an evolution starting from initial voltage V sub i, I'm going to a final voltage, V sub F, and then we have two points here. One is for voltage V sub A and another one for the voltage V sub B. And we want to obtain the time difference between these two instants. So this is very easy. So let's see the equation that we need. This is the equation corresponding to the voltage to the exponential evolution. This is the time constant, for example, for an RC circuit that we are going to use is R times the capacitance C. So we can solve for the time, then get the difference in time by using this equation. And from it, we can get finally this equation here. And we can see that it doesn't depend on the initial voltage, only on the final voltage. And this is valid even if the initial voltage is greater than the final voltage. So this equation is interesting and we will be using it in the following calculations. Let's start by the turn on process. As we have seen in previous video, this is the equation that we need to calculate the energy that is going to be dissipated during the turn on process. And in this equation, we know the voltage, we know the current, as we have seen, but we need to calculate from the data sheet information the on time. And as we have seen also, these are the waveforms that we have during the turn on transition. This is the complete on time. And we have two intervals. One is the interval in which the current is rising until getting the final value in a steady state. And then the other interval is when the voltage starts decreasing once the current has reached the final value. And this is the interval T sub FB, the falling of the voltage. So we need to calculate these two values in order to get T on and then calculate the losses. So let's see how to obtain these times using the equations that we obtained in previous video. So let's start by the current rise time, T sub Ri. If we look at the waveforms, we can see that this is the interval between T1 and T2. So is when the current is rising and this corresponds to the interval in which the voltage between the gate and the source goes from the threshold voltage, which is when the channel becomes conductive, until reaching the Miller plateau voltage, V sub P. So this is an exponential evolution in which we are charging the gate to source capacitance through the resistor RC the charging resistor. So we can calculate this time interval using the equation that we have seen before. And this is the time constant that we need in this case. 
Now for the voltage fall time T sub FV, this corresponds to this interval in which the voltage is decreasing. If we are considering linear capacitances, in order to simplify, we saw in previous video that the current that is circulating through capacitance CDS is constant and has this expression. So knowing the current and knowing the capacitance CDS, we can very easily calculate the time and we will obtain this equation here. So we have both intervals and now we can calculate the on time. The only issue that we have here is that these expressions depend on V sub V, which is the Miller plateau voltage also appearing here. So we need to calculate the value of this Miller plateau voltage in order to obtain the times. So let's see how to do it. To calculate the Miller plateau voltage during the turn on process, this voltage here, we need to calculate first the current through the channel. And as we saw in previous video, this current is given by this expression, which also depends on the plateau voltage. So we need to use also the transfer characteristic of the transistor in which we have the relationship between the current through the channel and the voltage VGS. And this is the equation that we employ to relate the current through the channel and the voltage VGS. But this is a second order equation, it's a polynomial equation. So in order to simplify, we can use a linear approximation, as shown here, in which the current through the channel is given by the transconductance times the difference between the gate to source voltage and the threshold voltage. So now it's very easy. We have a system of equations for the current through the channel. And by solving it, we can get the Miller plateau voltage as a function of the different parameters. And in order to simplify, we have used here the capacitance, output capacitance of the transistor and the reverse transfer capacitance of the transistor, which are given by this expression, as we know. So with the equations that we have just seen, we can calculate the turn on losses and all the parameters that we need to do these calculations can be gotten from the data sheet of the manufacturer. For example, in this case, for this transistor IRF640 that we are using as an example, remember that we are not endorsing any manufacturer in this presentation. We can see from the information of the data sheet that we can get the threshold voltage here, the forward transconductance, and also the three capacitances. In our case, we need the output capacitance, COSS, here, and the reverse transfer capacitance, here. And also, usually, the manufacturer provides the transfer characteristics. So we can get more information using this transfer characteristic and we can do the linear approximation by taking two points and obtaining the line that joins these two points. So now we can continue with the MOSFET turn off process. We have seen this equation to calculate the losses during this interval and then we need to calculate this time, the off time during which we have that the voltage is going to increase at constant current and then the current is decreasing at constant voltage. And the total interval T off is given by the addition of these two times TRV and TFI. So let's see how to calculate these two intervals. The first interval TRV, as we saw in previous video, is the time during which the voltage VDS goes from zero up to the voltage, the final voltage V sub V. And we saw in previous video that the current circulating through capacitance CDS is given by this equation. So from it, we can calculate very easily the duration of this interval 
and we obtain this equation. It's just the linear charging of capacitance CDS with this constant current. And regarding the other time interval, T sub Fi is the interval of time that takes the voltage VGS to go from the plateau voltage to the threshold voltage of the transistor. So during this interval is when the current is decreasing until reaching zero. And we can calculate this time interval using the equation that we saw at the beginning of this presentation, which is this one. And in this case, the value of the time constant is the discharging resistance times capacitance CGS. And with this, we get the total time interval of the term of process. And also, as in the case of the turn on process, to calculate these time intervals during the turn off process, we need to obtain the value of the Miller's plateau voltage. For this, we use the transistor transfer characteristic together with the current that is circulating through the channel during this interval. So in previous video, we obtained this value of the current circulating through the channel. So we can go to the transfer characteristic of the transistor and then get the value of the plateau voltage during the turn off process. Again, in order to simplify, we can use a linear approximation for the relationship between the current through the channel and the voltage VGS. And in this way, we can obtain a closed expression for the value of the Miller's plateau voltage. So now we have this system of equation. This is the current through the channel and this is the relationship between the current through the channel and the VGS voltage during the Miller plateau, which is equal to V sub P prime. And solving this system of equations, we can get finally the Miller's plateau voltage during this interval. And now let's do an example of calculation of the losses. We are going to use our model, our transistor in q -spice. So these are the parameters that we have. We are going to consider constant capacitances, linear capacitances, as we are doing in our analysis and calculation of the losses. So we are going to use these values for the capacitances. We are considering the values of the capacitances in the higher voltage range between the drain and the source, because as we know, is in this higher voltage range in which most of the transitions take place. This is the value of the charging and discharging resistance, the voltage, the current, and these are the values of the output capacitance and the reverse transfer capacitance. And in order to model the transfer characteristic, in green we have the actual characteristic, and in blue we have the approximation that we have selected, because in our case we are operating in this range, so we have selected this line with these values, threshold voltage and thrust conductance, to approximate the behavior of our transistor in active region. And with this we have everything and we can calculate the switching losses that we are going to have. So now for the turn on process calculations, it is very easy. We only have to apply the equations that we have. We calculate the Miller's plateau voltage using this expression and we get 6.6 .6 volts, very similar to the simulation value. Then we can calculate the time in which the current is rising. Using this equation, we get 4.3 nanoseconds. The time during which the voltage is falling. Using this equation, we get 11.9 nanoseconds. So the total on time is 16.2 nanoseconds. And using this equation, we get finally 1.94 microjoules for the turn on losses. And from the simulation, we get 1.92 microjoules, which is very similar. 
And for the turn of process, we follow the same procedure. We first calculate the Miller's plateau voltage. This is the equation, and we get 5.3 volts. Then the time interval during which the voltage is increasing, and we get 18.9 nanoseconds. The time interval during which the current is falling, with this equation, 6.9 nanoseconds. So we have now the total of time, 25.8 nanoseconds, and with this we can calculate the losses during the term of transition, and we get 3.1 microjoules. From the simulation results, as seen in previous video, we get 2.65 microjoules, which is also quite similar. And with this, we get to the end of this presentation today. I hope that you find this information useful. Please let me know using the comments section of this video. If you have any comment or question, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.